Hey friends, thanks so much for stopping by. Today's DIY is a little different than I usually make. I live here in the northeast of the US and it has been absolutely freezing up here and there's little or no food for the birds, so I'm making them a bird seed wreath and some Valentine hearts. If you live in a warmer climate, and I am super jealous because it is so cold here, I'm also going to be sharing a Dollar Tree hanging bird bath that I made a while back. Getting started, I'm adding some dry fruit to my hanging hearts, and I'm using two boxes of raisins and about a half a bag of these organic dried cranberries. I opened the two boxes of raisins onto my cutting board. Using my knife, I then cut them into smaller pieces and I think you can probably leave them original size, but I just wanted to make them a little smaller so they were easier for the birds to eat. When I was done, I added about a half a bag of the dried cranberries and then I chopped those up as well. When I was done, I mixed them both up and now I'm going to make the gelatin that will hold the dried fruit and the seeds together. I'm using the Knox gelatin and there's four packages inside. I'm only going to be using two. Along with the gelatin, I'm also using some whole wheat flour and some corn syrup and I picked all these ingredients up at Target. I have three quarters of a cup of hot water and I'm adding in both packages of the gelatin. Then I'm just whisking it all together until it's completely dissolved. With that done, I'm now mixing in three tablespoons of corn syrup and I'm gonna mix that together as well. When I'm done, I'm then adding in three-fourths of a cup of the wheat flour. I'm now adding that to my mixture and I'm combining them all together. I picked my bird seed up at my local Walmart and I'm going to be slowly blending in four cups. The mixture gets a little thick so I just kept adding in my seed and I used a little muscle to mix it all together. Once all the seed was blended, I then incorporated my chopped raisins and dried cranberries. I'm making my bird seed mixture into Valentine hearts and I'm using two heart cookie cutters and two plastic heart bowls that I have, but you can always use anything that you have on hand. You're going to have to make a hole in your heart so you can add your hanger and I just went outside and cut four sticks at about four inches in length. I placed a piece of waxed paper over my cookie sheet and then using some vegetable spray, I sprayed the inside of my bowls and my cookie cutters. So now that they all have a coat of vegetable spray, I'm taking my bird seed mixture and I'm filling my two heart bowls and my cookie cutters. Once my seed mixture was pressed into place, I then took one of the sticks that I cut, I decided how I wanted my heart to hang and then I pressed the stick into the seed, making sure that it hit the bottom of my container and the cookie cutters. As I was adding the seed, I didn't measure out any exact amounts. I just kind of eyeballed the size of my containers and the amount of the bird seed mixture. Now that I'm done, I'm placing my cookie sheet in the refrigerator and I'm going to let it set up overnight. Now it's the next day and my hearts have completely set up and I'm placing mine on this cookie rack, but you can place yours on anything you'd like. The vegetable spray did its job and they're slipping right out of the molds. And then I'm just removing the sticks. Now that all four of my hearts are free from their molds and they have a hole in them, I'm going to be giving each one a ribbon hanger. 
I'm using some Valentine's Day ribbon from the Dollar Tree, along with some that I had in my stash. I slipped four different ribbons through each of the hearts. I cut them all at different lengths, and then I just tied them off with a knot. I wouldn't suggest using any cord or jute as a hanger because it can act like a saw and in the wind it can cut right through the hole in your heart. After I had added all the hangers, we had the worst weather blow through here. It was snow showers and rainy. It was just miserable. So I did take the hearts and I left them out in my garage for about four days. And by doing that, they actually were a bit drier and seemed more firm than when I first removed them from the fridge. I hung my four hearts outside and in about 10 minutes, I had a hungry little bird land and start pecking away at the feeder. If you're enjoying my video, please consider clicking on that red subscribe button and leaving me a big thumbs up. To start my birdseed wreath, I'm first going to be adding in some unsalted peanuts and I just picked these up at my local grocery store. I removed them from their shells and I'm going to be adding in a cup, but this step is completely optional. You can always just add in an extra cup of birdseed. So now that I'm done, I have just about a cup of peanuts and I'm placing them into my measuring cup and then I'm going to break them up into smaller pieces just by crushing them with my ice cream scoop. Instead of using the traditional lard that a lot of people use to make their birdseed wreath, I'm going to make mine with coconut oil and I picked mine up at Target. I'm using three and a half cups of the melted oil, so I picked up two jars. I placed them both in my microwave to melt, and then I measured out three and a half cups. This wreath is so easy to make. I then just poured my measured coconut oil into a larger bowl. I then added in seven cups of bird seed, my cup of crushed peanuts, and I actually had a half a bag left of the dried cranberries, so I just chopped those up and added those in as well. And then I just gave it a good mixing. To make my wreath look pretty, I'm using my bunt pan. And if you don't have one of these, you can always find them at thrift stores. They're usually pretty cheap. I slowly poured my seed mixture into the pan. I leveled it off and then I placed it in my refrigerator and I let it set up overnight. To remove the wreath, I placed the bottom part of the pan in some warm water and I let it set there for about 20 seconds. I then placed a sheet of waxed paper over the top and my birdseed wreath slipped right out. I wish you were here because this smells so good. For my hanger, I'm adding a thicker Valentine's Day ribbon to my wreath and if you've watched any of my past videos, you know this is pretty much all I've been able to score at my Dollar Tree this year. I cut about a 36 inch length of ribbon. I then wrapped it around the center of my wreath, tied it into a strong knot, clipped off the excess end, and then it was ready to hang. And one quick tip is that coconut oil melts at 76 degrees, so this is definitely a wreath to make for cooler climates. Getting started, I picked up a 12 inch wire wreath form at Michael's and I'm going to remove the inner support. I slipped my pliers under the edge of all six metal loops and I pulled them open and this freed up the inner circle. I'm now using my pliers to close and flatten the six loops. When I'm done, I'm then turning the form over and this will become the top of our bird bath. And once again, using my pliers, I'm now grabbing hold of each of the tabs and I'm pulling them down and slightly under. 
And by doing this, we now have an open area for our water basin. I'm definitely no bird expert, but from what I've read on the internet, it says birds like about one to three inches of water to bathe in. For the bath part of my bird bath, I'm using a clear glass pie plate that I picked up at a thrift store for a dollar. And it sets perfectly inside the form. To decorate the bottom of my pie plate, I'm using a package of blue and clear flat bottom beads that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I washed them all with my Dawn soap to make sure there was no oily residue. I'm using this all-purpose adhesive to attach my beads to the bottom of the plate. I'm not using gloves, so I'm keeping this wooden stick handy in case I need to move anything around. Here comes the fun part, and you can let your creativity kick in. I turned the pie plate over, and I'm working on the bottom of the plate. And then using my adhesive, I'm starting to add the beads, and I'm going to make a little flower pattern. This glue works amazing. I'm just adding some to the bottom of the plate, and then I'm placing the flat ends of the beads in the glue. I'm using this type of adhesive because it specifically says it glues glass to glass. Now, E6000 says it also does. I wasn't really sure how well that would hold up out in the weather, so I used this instead, but the E6000 might work just as well. If you end up using E6000 to make this project, please be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know how it worked out. I chose blue and clear glass beads for my bird bath, but you can find an assortment of different color beads at the Dollar Tree. As I was gluing them down, I did notice that they aren't uniform in size, and although I wanted to have a perfect pattern on the bottom, that just wasn't going to happen. Once I had the bottom complete, I then placed one row around the side. With my glue completely dry, I then turned over the plate, and using a damp cloth, I just removed any of the excess residue. I need a hanger, and all I could find at my Dollar Tree was the chain on this hanging basket, so I removed it to use on my bird bath. To match my beads, I'm using some blue spray paint, and I'm painting the chain and both sides of my wire base. I let both pieces dry completely, and then to attach the three chains, I just clipped one onto every other support. Before I clipped on my last chain, I then placed my decorated plate in the center. Once I had it in place, I then clipped on my last chain. This not only makes an amazing bird bath, but it also doubles as a bird feeder. To finish up, I hung it outside and I added in some water. Thanks for making it to the end, and I hope you enjoyed making these bird-inspired DIYs with me. If you had fun hanging out and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to come back and hang out with her again, don't forget to click that little red subscribe button below, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye, everybody!